Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And make sure you hit that like button because we're back now with some MLB action. And in the next episode, we will be going over the custom prospects. We have the custom recruits for NCAA, the series over with Coastal Carolina. But now we're back to MLB and the prospects will be shown in the next episode. So now we're heading to some uh, MLB action. We started the season out three and one, but unfortunately, disaster struck. Taylor Ward broken hand out one to two months and this is the one position we didn't really go after too hard in free agency because we knew that taylor ward was up next but what do you know four games into the season he already is on the 60 day dl out one to two months so we do need to find a replacement so we did decide to look at a few catchers here starting with christian vasquez he now plays for the dodgers and you can see he's a pretty good player but you know his his stats just aren't there he's never been an everyday uh catcher and in the, kind of a full season he kind of played last year it was more like half a season um he hit 254 not too bad but he is 29 and b potential and 81 overall i think he would require a little bit more in trade talks and i don't think that's the direction i'm going for here Another team I decided to look at were the Mets because look at them. They have four catchers at the MLB level. So starting out with Tyler Flowers, he's 34 years old. He's their starter right now, hitting 364 to start the season. But I just don't think they're going to trade their starter. That's just not realistic. Then they have Robinson Chirinos. And looking at Chirinos, he is pretty good. I mean, he has pretty good hitting attributes. I mean, if you look at his hitting attributes, they're declining. He is 35 years old and he has good fielding attributes as well. But, you know, he just hasn't been a consistent, gr consistently great hitter. And I just need a pretty good guy who can hit the ball at the catch position. And looking at Matt Wieters, um, I just don't like him either. I mean, he's never been a great hitter in the last two years. He's hit only 224 and 237, respectively. And then Travis Darno, he's actually, I mean, severely underachieved in his career. I think he was meant to be the next great catcher from the Mets. And, I mean, he's never panned out. So we focus our sights on the Red Sox. They have two good catchers. Austin Bard's 81 overall. He is right now um, a little bit better than their uh, starter Cervelli and Blake Swihart. But you know the thing is they have three good catchers here. And I think that going after a veteran like Francisco Cervelli, a guy who's been just pretty consistent throughout his whole career, just a great hitter he is, I think he would be the perfect match for us. But unfortunately, when you trade for people this talented, you have to give up a lot. And we're going to keep this realistic. So it would probably, to get Cervelli, it would take at least one B potential prospect and that's exactly what we're gonna have to give up if you look at who we're giving up that b potential edward cabrera he's 21 years old and we've played a couple games with him at the double a level but you know he's just not uh progressing at a rate where we're even gonna see him probably at the major league level so we're probably gonna get rid of him and along with him uh we are going to get rid of uh we're gonna get rid of yeah Yairo, Yairo Munoz, I don't even know how to say his first name, but Munoz, he's going to have to go as well. They are interested in this deal, but to keep it realistic, it probably would take at least another prospect just to get uh, Cervelli, and we're going to execute this trade, and it's been short-lived for Munoz in our organization. We tried him at the MLB level because he did have experience. Remember, he hit 280 for St. Louis in the first year of this franchise, so I thought he would kind of pan out for us when we played him in 2019 last year, but he didn't really. 165, so I think the time for him to go is now, and plus it clears up another spot for maybe Max Liebham or another one of our prospects to show what they have at the MLB level. So we're going to make this trade and then hop back into some action. We'll get to see Cervelli in action right away, so let's get into that. So starting out this game, these couple of games in this series, you know, the Marlins have started out pretty slow out of the gates on the offensive end. Uh, you can see, like, nobody is really hitting for a higher average right at this moment. But we can, we can do our thing here because, remember, last year versus the Nationals, we did our thing. The year before that, they kind of handled us, but we kind of have taken the reins 
of this division a little bit. We barely won the division last year, but we can take this over. We stole Adam Eaton from him. Here he is up to the plate here to start out this game in the bottom of the first with a hit. And I think that we've got the better roster. I mean, they've got a better pitching staff. I got to admit, they probably do. Maybe not. I don't know. But this is this is what it's going to take. I mean, we're going to have to beat up on them. If we can beat up on them, I'm not really worried about the other teams in our division. We do have to beat them as well. But the Nationals are the one team that we have to watch out for year in and year out. And they have a totally new team as well. They signed Jose Abreu. And remember, they traded for Tommy Pham. So those are kind of the two guys that this team is built around along with uh, Trey Turner. So now in the first inning, you see we got to run across the plate. And here is Josh uh, Bell up with a 2-2 two two count. Hits a sacrifice fly to left field. And that's a 2 nothing lead here for the Miami Marlins. And up comes the new newly acquired Francisco Cervelli, but he grounds out to second base to end this inning. But we get two on the board to start out this game. So on to the bottom of the third inning. Here is Lucas Salee getting a hit to the right side. So he's starting this inning out with a hit. So up comes Domingo Santana, gets a low pitch to hit. And on a hit and run, he gets a bloop single. So now Lucas Salee makes it all the way to third. So now guys on the corners here with one out in the inning with Manny Machado coming to the plate. 3-1 count. And the runner is on the move, and he hits a chopper to third base. But that is good enough to score the run from third. So now it is 3-0 here with two outs with Josh Bell coming to the plate. But he can't do anything. But at least we have three runs here in the early frames of this game so now moving on along in this game on to the bottom of the fifth inning here's adam eaton coming up and like i said man what a treat it was stealing him especially from the nationals i mean it's bittersweet stealing him from the nationals because i mean hey it, the t competition is gone but i mean he's on our team now as lucas elite comes up and he crushes one to center field but that one's just to the warning track and uh that's caught here for the first out of the inning. So up comes Domingo Santana up, and he gets a hit to the right side. So Domingo Santana has been hitting the ball really well here in the early games of this season as Manny Machado comes up, the reigning MVP, and he gets a low pitch to hit, and that's a hit up the middle, and that one's going to drive in one. And look at Domingo Santana using his wheels, getting all the way to third on that, and we take the 4 nothing lead off of that hit. And the manager has to bring in Jeremy Hellickson out of the bullpen to finish out this inning. But he's got a lot of tough batters to face, including Josh Bell, who gets a low pitch to hit, drives this one to the left center gap. And look at Machado. He's on his horse heading home, and he is going to get in to home with a, just standing up. And now Josh Bell drives in another run. And this man, this lineup is full of explosive bats as Francisco Cervelli comes up, but he can't get his first hit as a Marlin, but does move the runner over here to third base with two outs. Here comes Torres up to bat, but he can't get a hit. But man, 6 nothing here through five innings as the Marlins showing out this offense is Dan Straley on the mound showing off his arm, and we're into the sixth inning. And that's the first hit given up by Straley. And Straley, man, he I mean, you know he used to play for the Marlins. We signed him back, and he's just doing his thing with two outs here. He's getting Trey Turner to line out to uh, Josh Bell at first base. So now we're on to the bottom of the seventh inning. Some more offense here as Manny Machado continues his great game at the plate as he gets a double to the right center gap. And now he's on second here with Josh Bell coming up. I mean, so many bats, so much potential as Josh Bell takes this one deep. And that one is not coming back. And Josh Bell, you know, we gave him the reins as Justin Boer kind of took the leadership role, moved to the bench and opened up the door for Josh Bell to have a breakout season. He already hit around 300 last season. But now as a full-time starter at first base, we're looking for him to have a huge one 
as we move on to the ninth inning. Dan Straley still on the mound as he's only given up two runs, two hits actually, so far in this game as he gets Trey Turner to ground out. So one more at bat here for the Nationals and Tommy Pham grounds out to third and Dan Straley, what a game it was for him on the mound. Two hits given up, eight strikeouts and the Marlins offense does work. I mean, look at the top guys in this lineup. I mean, everybody has multiple hits. The only guy that didn't get a hit was actually Jareas in the game as we just take care of business at home. Move on to be 4-1, and one, looking to sweep the Nationals now as it's the battle of the aces. Strasburg versus Michael Fulmer as we start this game out in the fourth inning with Domingo Santana coming up, and he gets a hold of this one, and that one is going to be out of the yard off of Strasburg, high in the zone. And you know Domingo Santana, you know he was actually – one of the leading candidates to get MVP last season and come this season, I'm looking for him to maybe lead the way in that department on this team because Manny Machado did win it last year, but honestly, I don't know how because he hit 280 and everybody else had a better average. I mean, Josh Bell did and Santana. So up comes Lucas Ali here in the bottom of the fifth inning to start this inning out and he gets a triple off of the diving attempts there by the center fielder. And up comes Cervelli here. Can he get his first hit? Nope, he can't. He grounds out to second, but not before a run comes across the plate. And it is a 2-0 lead here in the fifth inning as Garcia comes up, but he can't get a hit. He's been off to a slow start. After a pretty good spring training, he flies out to left field. So up with two outs. Here's Fulmer trying to keep this inning going, but nope. He flies out to right field to Tommy Pham. So now we're moving on to the sixth inning here, and here's Tommy Pham at the plate, and he's getting a hit off of Fulmer to start this inning out. And Fulmer hasn't given up many hits up to this point, but up comes Jose Abreu here with a 3-2 count, two outs, and he drives one deep to right field, and that one is going to be gone into the bullpen, the newly signed Jose Abreu, and that is going to be a 2-2 two to two game here in the sixth inning as Fulmer still in a little bit of trouble to Brian Dozier, and somehow Domingo Santana doesn't attempt to get that ball. He just lets it basically bounce right past him, and Dozier continues this inning and gets on to second as Michael Taylor comes up, and he gets a hit up the middle, and look at this. On his way home to score is Tommy Pham, actually Brian Dozier, and that is going to be a 3-2 to two lead here in the sixth inning as now we finally get the third out of the inning here in the sixth inning. So now on to the bottom half of the inning. Here is Josh Bell up to bat with one out, 3-2 count. He gets a hit up the middle. So Josh Bell starts this inning out with a hit, and like I said, I'm going to try to Hover around 300 with him once again. That would be a win as Domingo Santana comes to the plate. And look at Domingo Santana in this game straight showing out. Two home runs, his second and third of the year. This one goes for three, 458 feet to center field. And Domingo Santana is off to a hot, scorching start here for the Marlins as we take the 4-3 to three lead. So up comes Garcia here in the seventh here with one out. And he's going to draw the walk as Lewis Brinson comes up here. And he did not get the start in this game, but he swings at a pitch in the dirt. But Garcia does move over to second here. So with two outs here and Adam Eaton coming to the plate, can he drive in a run? And yes, he can. He drives one to the left center gap. Adam Eaton's going to be on his horse here, getting to second base. And no, he's thinking three on this one. And he makes it there with that 82 speed. And Adam Eaton... Getting work done versus former team as Josh Bell comes up and he can't get it done. That one was hit on the screws, but right to the left fielder to end the inning. 
So now on to the eighth inning here, and Domingo Santana continuing his hot game, three for four up to this point as he gets the hit up the middle. So that brings up Manny Machado, who's been hitting the ball well as well, and he gets a hit up the middle as Domingo Santana getting greedy a little bit, but he's got the speed to get to third on that one. So now guys on first and third here, no outs in the inning as Josh Reddick comes up, and he hits one up the middle. And look at Machado on the hit and run. Going to make it to third base. So 6-3 to three here in the eighth inning. And we are in the driver's seat in this game as Lucas Salih comes up. And he check swings, but that's going to be a called strike on the inside part of the plate. So Francisco Cervelli comes up with a 3-1 and one count. And that's not going to get it done. Hitting into a double play. But we're heading into the ninth inning with a 3 run cushion as we give Tony Zich here the save opportunity as he comes in in the ninth inning and here he's facing the first batter here Moda and that's going to be a strikeout looking as he faces the next batter but this one is going to be a hit over Manny Machado's head at shortstop and that is going to be a stand up double here in the ninth inning so that's going to bring up Trey Turner and Trey Turner is going to ground out so one out away here from starting this season out five and one sweeping the Nationals already and here comes Tommy Pham up oh and that was a questionable ball on that one the fastball up in the zone was called a ball but up comes Jose Abreu has already went deep in this game and on a 3-1 count he takes this one deep in the ninth inning and the five to one record five and one record is ruined off of two swings of Abreu and just like that Jose Abreu and Domingo Santana both hit two homers but this one is the biggest of them all tying this game up here in the ninth inning as the Nationals come back and they bring this one to the bottom of the ninth inning. Can we score the game-winning run here before going into extra? So we bring in Giant G of Attila to pinch hit for the pitcher. And that's not going to do it. Flying out to center. So now two outs here. Adam Eaton here is going to take this one to extras. And just like that, Tony Zich, the blown save. And that was kind of the theme last year with Bartolo Colon Jr. When we had him in early on in the season as a closer, he couldn't close games. Maybe Tony Zich, maybe it was just a bad game. You never know. We'll have to keep an eye out. But these innings keep going on. Now onto the bottom of the 14th inning. Can Cervelli end it and no he strikes out looking so now on to the bottom of the 16th inning this game will not end as Josh Reddick comes up with two outs and that's a fly ball to center field so now on to the 17th inning almost two full games have been played and now we're into the 18th inning actually and here is Moda coming up and Moda takes it deep over the left field wall and Benny Moda takes it deep and that is going to be a one run game here for the Nationals and we eventually do get out of this inning as Severino on the mound here late in the game we don't want to use up a ton of pitching because this has been one long game but onto the bottom half here's Eaton starting this inning out with a base hit here to the right side and up comes Josh Bell and he smacks one up the middle so Josh Bell continuing his hot start but look at Adam Eaton that 82 speed he's making it all the way to third so now guys on the corners here with the red hot Domingo Santana at the plate and he's gonna hit a dribbler back to the catcher but look at Adam Eaton what is he doing he tries to make it home on that but it, the ball bounces right before home plate and for some reason he goes, but up comes Manny Machado here with two outs. Can he get a clutch hit? And he does just that. Ties this game up here in the 18th. But look at our man getting thrown out at third base there. And now we're moving on to the 19th inning. So here is Cervelli 
with two outs he grounds out so this game is never ending as now here comes Garcia up the 20th inning and he gets a hit to the left side starting this inning out and we have now played over two games of action here 20 innings as we come up and bunt the runner over Torres that time bunts uh, Garcia over to second so up comes Josh Bell can he be the hero and with two outs a questionable strike on the outside part of the plate and Hellickson gets the call so now we're on to the bottom of the 21st inning and Lucas Sali strikes out looking so more and more action as this game will just not end and up comes Adam Eaton here in the bottom of the 20 third inning and Hellickson still on the mound can you believe it he's been pitching all of these innings as he beans Adam Eaton on that one and that brings up Josh Bell who flies out to right field so up comes Domingo Santana with one out he's been hot and on pass ball this time allows Adam Eaton to move to second base so a hit pr pretty much wins it with that speed of Adam Eaton on second and on a one two count one out He's going to hit one deep to center field, and that one isn't going to be as deep as I thought off the bat. And we're not going to tag him, not going to risk it here with the MVP, the former MVP, Manny Machado coming up. So on a three and one count, two outs, Hellickson still on the mound. Manny Machado takes this deep, and that is going to be the game. 23 innings. And I thought this game would never end, but Machado comes through for us and we get the win as the Marlins start this season out 5-1, and one, the sixth game homestand before going on the road. What a great start. What a start to the season as, you know, an injury pretty much derailed our morale, but we've come back and swept the Nationals. And we got to have Ward get well soon because, you know, Cervelli pretty much didn't get any hits at all in this series. So hopefully he gets going come the next few games and he starts getting hot. So it's a good start, but we'll see how this season starts to unfold as we start to play tougher teams and starting to play more games. So hit subscribe, hit that like button because this season's just getting started. So let's get it. Let's go.